this is actually in very good condition hello photographer welcome back to my channel it's belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you could take better photos now as you might have noticed i seldom if ever talk about gear on my channel I have made a few videos here and there about a particular piece of gear, but then I don't really make videos based solely on that. Though, seeing that this is a 1000 sub special, I might just make that an exception. So today we're gonna be more relaxed and I'm gonna talk about how I got into film photography. I did not grow up shooting film photography and so film has been something that's completely foreign to me. And I've been shooting digital all along before I owned my first film camera, which I will go into later on in this video. As I go, I'll share also on the film cameras that I've owned and the roles that I've played on this journey. So if you happen to be considering whether or not you wanna do film photography, hopefully this would give you a generic picture of what it was like for me. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So the first film camera that I ever owned is this. It's a Lomography Simple Use camera which was gifted to me by a friend. By the way, for information, I've not bought a single film camera in my life. All of these cameras that I've owned either were gifted to me or they just made their way to me somehow. So as far as this camera goes, I would say that receiving this camera was really a pivotal moment in my photography because I just never shot film. Like, I was never interested in film before this. So what happened was that this camera came with a roll that's already loaded inside so all i had to do literally is to press the shutter to take photos and i also had a flash which also is a no-brainer to operate i talked about its construction and its operation in this video so i'm not gonna go into details here so essentially this camera introduced me to this entire category of cameras known as point and shoots i mean even in a digital world you can't have point and shoots and cameras today are getting smaller and smaller and they can do, you know, increasingly amazing things. But for the most part, the way that a digital camera is built does mean that a smaller sensor size on a digital point and shoot would be a deal breaker. For film, of course, it's the same thing. There is always going to be this compromise between the size, the portability of the camera and quality of the images that it could create. But because of the way film cameras are built inherently, like the film in this is still 35mm. So the sensor is essentially a full frame sensor, just that it's built with limited controls on the settings. It's so compact that there isn't really a situation in which I cannot bring this with me. I've not run into a situation where I cannot fit this on my pockets or in my bags. Of course, this camera does have its own problems. Like the lens distortion really disturbs me quite a bit. It feels really magical to be able to shoot decent quality images, which is kind of guaranteed by the film, but at the same time, not worry about the exposure settings because of the way this thing is designed. And not just that, but the fact that it's so compact and the fact that it looks so much like a toy camera, it allowed me to capture situations and moments that I otherwise would not even have thought to be possible with a bulky DSLR camera. I just started to think about cameras differently. Definitely, they're supposed to take good photos, but at the same time, there's also this aspect of being able to work a scene that is also at play, which is something that I'm still working on apparently. The ease of using the camera per se and also the tiny form factor did really shake things up for me in terms of how I understand my craft. If you happen to be, you know, sitting on the fence as to whether or not film photography is for you, this is a great way to find out for yourself. That said though, having completed the first roll of film which essentially came in with the camera, I did not shoot the second roll that came with this package. It was not really about the images. I liked how they turned out. I found film photography to be a really intimidating process at that time. Looking back, having shot digital for my entire life, film photography is definitely not something that you should expect to be able to understand in a day or two. The issue at the time was that I didn't know how to properly load the roll of film onto the camera, but I don't want to just mess with it because I don't want to waste the film and I wanted to be able to find a time to properly learn how to do it. So in simple words, I forgot about it. Well, for a few months until I found this camera, which is a Minota SLR. I did not buy this camera, as I've said, myself. But rather, I was moving into the room that my grandparents once took up. I was trying to fit myself into the cabinets and this is when I found cameras lying 
in the cabinet. So I took it out, I put the batteries in and it actually worked. Like the display is actually working. This camera when I found it was completely covered with mold. So this part where the grip is supposed to be was covered with like white substance that would just flake off. And I think it's not completely gone to this day. But anyway, so it was eating into the plastic or the coating that was covering the grip. So I took some time to clean it off. Luckily, the mold did not affect the lens. So the lens remained mold free and also the sensor was clean. Like the odds of this happening, I mean, it just sounds so good to be true. The reason why the metal is showing in this bit is because the plastic casing pretty much has been destroyed by the mold. A lot of cracks have been developing along the plastic coating and I think one bit just literally dropped off there. Um, yeah, but anyway, so having excavated this entire thing along with the Minota Nifty 50, I realized that this thing is actually a gem, like it's good stuff. And so it was at this point where I started taking film photography seriously, like actually learning how to properly load film. I mean, or else how do you even start, right? Having found this camera really gave me the nudge that I needed to put in a time and effort to study film photography and get a basic understanding of how it works. This is going to sound so made up, but basically after a few months since I found the Minota SLR, in another cabinet, I found this. I found the Seagull TLR. When I found this, I didn't know what to do with it because I just automatically assumed that it's not working. So the thing with the Minota camera that I showed you just now, the buttons are actually defective, so I cannot shoot on manual mode, basically. I've been shooting on full auto mode, but the bottom line is that it still works. So because of that, I just assumed that this is not working. It just looks so old, and I didn't really know what medium format is. I didn't know that the fact that this did not require any electricity. So in the ensuing months after discovering the Minota, I've been learning as much as I can about film photography because of the SLR, and that is when I realized that this is actually a really cool camera. It's basically a most affordable option to get into medium format photography, gives you really decent results. Plus, I didn't even acquire the camera. Like, it was like a gift from the universe, and so I just absolutely have no excuse to not use it. So eventually, I just mustered up my courage to load a roll of 120 film. If you've done that for the first time, you'd know how scary it was. Either way, I did it with the help of the assistant at the shop. I started shooting my first roll, which by the way, completely turned out to be trash. I got better at it as I shot more. But there's also a really interesting backstory as to why this camera was even in that drawer. According to my relatives, my grandpa actually bought this camera when he was trying to court my grandma because, well, he wanted to take photos of her. After they got together, guess what? He never used it ever again and that's how it ended up in that cabinet for years. Apparently it's really fun to shoot on this but it also means a lot to me in a sense that I think about my grandparents whenever I shoot on this camera. At this point, I'm really happy to announce that I'm ready to add a new member to this collection. It is the Canon EOS A2, which is a camera that you see me unbox at the beginning of this video. This was mailed to me by some good friends of the channel all the way from the US. A massive thanks to Rowan and Rayleigh and your family. I was speechless when I saw what came in the packet. I was totally not expecting a camera. So this camera is powered by a battery that looks something like this. This one has run out. I'm gonna have to buy new ones to power this camera, which will take a while, bear with me, because it's been a while since I've needed these batteries. But this camera, I believe, will be a precious addition to the family of cameras that I have, because the Minota SLR, as I've said, only allows me to shoot on auto mode, but I do think it will be interesting to be able to have some leeway and have some control over the settings that I'm shooting on, especially when it comes to expired film. And also, the resemblance between the EOS A2 and also the EOS 5D Mark IV, which is my choice of digital camera that I shoot professionally on today. It just opens up for a series of really interesting experiments. So yeah, draw me ideas if you want to see me do anything with these cameras. To be honest, sometimes I still low-key think that I must have gone crazy when I decided to start a YouTube channel on photography in 2021. Well, 2020, the channel is now like about one year old. It's not the easiest thing to do on a planet, but it's really been worthwhile, especially seeing you guys leave thoughtful comments on the channel and sharing something that's really personal. I read through all of them because I appreciate you all. And I think I have responded to everyone. I think I have. To be honest, I've also learned a great deal myself about photography and also about videography, actually, in this journey of doing YouTube. So once again, a massive thank you to all of you 
I hope that you enjoyed this little sharing of mine and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye! You're so freaking hot. <laughs>